Father, we worship you, we adore you, we celebrate you. Thank you, our Lord. Thank you, our God, for another beautiful day. Thank you, Jesus, for another wonderful time. Thank you, Jesus, for another glorious moment. Thank you, Jesus. Wherever you are joining me from today, happy Sunday to every one of us. Happy Sunday, happy weekend, happy glorious Sunday. You are welcome to Pray in the Goods Network, an online prayer ministry where we come together in the place of prayer to pray unto the living God in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ with the help of Holy Spirit. Once again, I welcome every one of you to today, Sunday, glorious service in the name of Jesus. Praise ye the Lord. Let's lift up our hand and appreciate our Lord, our God today. Let's lift up our hand and worship him. Let's lift up our hand and adore him. I want you to lift up your hand and bless the name of our Lord, our God, for another glorious moment, for another glorious time, for this great opportunity. For me and you to be alive, to witness another glorious Sunday, another glorious and wonderful Sunday. Today is the 29th day of this month. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Today is 29. We have how many days to go? Two days to go. Why not just lift up your hand and appreciate God for his glorious, for his mighty, for his faithfulness, for his love over you and your loved one. Why not just lift up your hand and appreciate him? Give him praise. Give him honor. Let's celebrate God. Let's appreciate him. Let's say, Father, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for sparing our life from the beginning of this year to this very month, the tenth month of this year. Let's appreciate him for helping us, for keeping us from the beginning of this month to this very moment, the 29th day of this month, which means God has allowed you to see the ups and down of 28 days non-stop. And those 28 days did not swallow you. Praise the Lord. Why not just lift up a hand and let's appreciate him. Let's give him praise. Let's give him honor. Let's celebrate him. Let's adore him. Let's worship him. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. Lift up a hand and say thank you, Jesus. I can hear you, sir. I want you to say thank you, Jesus. Say, Father, for the gift of life. Thank you, Jesus. For my life, for my home, for my marriage, for my business, for my career. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says, only the living, only the living shall praise the Lord. Only the living. Only the living shall worship the Lord. Only the living. And I had my home to it. Only the living have a prayer request. Only the living have a need. Only the living have a prayer request. Only the living is expecting promotion. Only the living is expecting testimony. Only the living is expecting fruitfulness. Only the living is expecting the blessings of God. Only the living is expecting healing. Only the living is expecting the touch of God. Only the living is expecting glorious things. Only the living, only the living, only the living. The dead have no memorial. Those who are dead, they have no memorial. Those who are dead, they have nothing to request about. Those who are dead, they have no prayer request. Those who are dead, they don't even have prayer points for healing. Because they don't feel any pain again. Those who are dead, there's nothing in them to ask for again. If you are alive, if you are hearing me right now, if you are watching me right now, if you are listening to this message right now, that means there is hope for you. That means there is hope for your tomorrow. That means there is a request. That means there is a prayer. That means there is expectation. Why not just lift up your hand and say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We give you honor. 
We worship your holy name. Thank you, Father. Thank you for our family. Thank you for our loved one. To you be all the glory. To you be all the honor. To you be all the adoration. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. I want you to just lift up your hand and say, Father, I can hear you. Say, Father, say today, I want to see you. I want to see your glory. Can you pray that prayer? So, Lord, my God, say today, I want to see you. I want to see your glory. Can you turn it to prayer? So, Lord, my God, I want to see your glory. I want to see you. I want to see your glory. Oh, Lord, my God, I want to see you. I want to see your glory. Reveal 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 your glory. As the Lord God to reveal his glory in your life, in your home, in your marriage, in your business, in your career. So Lord my God, reveal your glory. In everything that concerns me, reveal your glory. Father, reveal your glory. 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 As the Lord God to reveal his glory in your life, in your home, in your marriage, in your business, in your career. Say, Lord, reveal your glory. I want to see 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 your glory. My Lord, my God, reveal your glory. 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 Reveal your glory in my life, in my home, in my marriage, in my business, in my career. Father, reveal your glory. 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 As the Lord God to reveal his glory in your life, in your marriage, in your business, in your career, in your home, in everything that concerns you, say, Father, reveal your glory. Lord, 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 reveal your glory. In every area of my life, Father, reveal your glory. Reveal your glory. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Before we look, go into today's uh, message and uh, I share one or two things with the Lord God. Lay my heart to share with us. Can we open our Bible to Judges 13, verse 19? Judges 13, verse 19. We are going to take one or two prayers from that pray place. Judges 13, verse 19. That scripture, Judges 13, starting from verse 9, 1, Introduce us to the life of the Israel, a whole nation. The Bible said, The children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. A whole country like Nigeria. If God is reporting that, oh, the Nigerian, oh, Nigeria, they are doing evil in his sight. Are we not doing evil? I don't know the country that you are watching from right now. Your country, are you not? Is your country not full of evil? A justice not perverted. The, 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 the elders, are they raising the children in the ways of the Lord? Even right from the family, are there no corruption? Are there no evil in the family? The children of Israel did evil in the eyes of the Lord, in the sight of the Lord. The children of Israel that I talk about your country, you talk about my country. You talk about no matter the country that you are watching from right now. And the repercussion of that evil. Some years ago, when, 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 when America started pulling out Christianity from their education system, you know, in those days, all their schools, you have the 
you have the plague, you have the wall, where you have the Ten Commandments, the Ten uh, Commandments of the law. Every school, you have them. Every school, they talk about Christ. Every school, they talk about Christian. Every school, they talk about Bible. Every school, every school. When they started pulling it out, and I was sharing with some of my friends then, I said, it's not, the repercussion is not today. The repercussion is tomorrow, in 10 years' time, in 20 years' time. And he said, no, this and that. I said, okay. You and I, we will live to see the repercussion. What they are doing, they are planting a seed. I said, when the seed started germinating, their fathers will not be able to bear it. Because then, when they talk about Christ, they talk about the Bible, they talk about the fear of the law. They, in, in, they, they, they implant the fear of the law in the, in the mind, in the heart of the children, right from the, their school, right from their teenager. Even as, as they are growing up. Don't do this, don't do this. The Lord is against this. If you do it, God can punish you, God can kill, God can destroy, God can kill a whole nation. So everyone they grew up to fear to fear the Lord. But when they begin to remove it, I say it's not Bible that they are removing. What they are removing is the fear of the Lord in the heart of the, those children. I said they are raising generation of children who will not fear the Lord. Who everything they will be doing will be evil. And I said. I remember I was sharing with one of my friends. I said, the consequence is, it's going to be like a ravenous wind that will consume the whole world. Ah, I said, oh, right. okay. Okay. Me, I will just drop the point. I will not, I don't argue. I don't argue. When they remove it, you and I know, the moment they remove the fear of the Lord, what happened? Heresies. Man and man can marry. Woman and woman can marry. They begin to legalize it. They started from legalizing abortion. From abortion to this, to that. To... And you know, even this that I'm seeing now, they can, because it's against the, <laughs> some social media platform ethics. When you talk about it, they block your line, they block your group, they block your platform. So somebody say, all right, we did not block your Facebook page. If they block my Facebook page, they don't block my ministry. <laughs> Praise it that Lord. They only block me from using Facebook page. And before you know it, God will raise another platform. <laughs> you talk about abortion negative, they, you are gone. Man and woman, woman and woman. You know why? Because the fear of the Lord has been removed. So those children that they begin to raise, they don't know anything about fear of the Lord. So they begin to do perversion, abominable things. They begin to walk naked. They can sleep with animals. They can do anything. And before you know it, other nations, they begin to copy them. That's why you see in Nigeria, a man and a woman will tell you that they want to marry. You see, thank God for those nations. Those nations who say, Stand on their ground and know, apart from being against the will of God, it's against their custom and tradition. May God bless those nations, like Nigeria, like Kenya. Those nations who see stand, no, we don't agree with this one. And you know, they begin to threaten those nations. If you don't agree, all, our, all the aids, support will not give you. I don't give us. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. The children of Israel did evil. The same thing, your country, my country, they are doing evil today. The moment you remove the fear of the Lord, what will be the consequence? And the Lord delivered them to the hand of the enemy for a certain number of years. That is not where I'm going today. Where I'm going is this. And for two, he introduced us to a particular family. Yes, they are evil on ground, but yet the Lord still see a single out a family. There was a certain man, Sora. Or the family of Danite, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and bear not. The wife was barren and bear not. And, and the angels of the Lord appear unto the woman. 
So we have seen the story now. I'm going to introduce the problem around in the nation, the reason for that problem, the or to the family that God wants to talk about. So let's go to fast 19 where we are going to take one or pray two prayer now. That fast 19. George is starting fast 19. So Manoah, you see the man now. The man was living in an environment in a nation that is full of problems, that is full of crisis, that is full of God judgment. Yet, and fast 18. And the angels of the Lord said unto him, Why hast thou after my name, seeing it is a secret? Then fast 19. So Manoah took a kid with a food offering. That's a sacrifice. And offer it upon a rock. Offer it upon a rock unto the Lord. A, a young uh, a young lamb, a young goat, a young goat, he slaughtered it and he brought it on a rock before the Lord. That's a sacrifice. Then what now happened? For every action, there is a reaction. For every action, either positive or negative, there is always a reaction. For whatever you do before the law, there is always a repercussion. Manoah was living in the days when there are problems, people are against anything that have to do with God, and God was punishing them. Yet, this man still recognized God, and this man brought a sacrifice, peace offering before the Lord. And what now happened? And the angel did wondrously, and Manoah and his wife look on. To look on their means. You know, when something strange happens, when something wonderful, mysteriously happens, you look, you do not only look with your eyes, you look with your mouth. Am I right? Uh, let me see those who are online. Am I right? Those of us online, uh, our prayer coordinator, Mrs. Uya, Mami Fashola. Am I right? Please, you are online. Can you make a comment on your nation? Let me know you are you're there. When something happens, Mysteriously, you look with your eyes. You don't only look with your eyes. You look with your whole body. You have your mouth. You open your mouth wide. Ha! Huh? What kind of mysterious thing is this? You don't even know when you open your mouth, but you just open your mouth in 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 in, in because you are just you are just surprised. It can't, that it, it's a wonder. That was what happened there. When Manoah carried that sacrifice before the Lord, there was a reaction. And what kind of reaction? For those who are just joining us, Judges 13, we are looking at verse 19. And the angels did wondrously, wondrously. And they were looking, what kind of miracle is this? They were looking. They look with their eyes, they will do they look with their whole body, their mouth was open. Ha. Huh. Every one of you, every one of us, including me, including every one of uh, every one of us in my house, we are going to look lift up our hand and you are going to cry unto the living God. Oh Lord my God, today do one drusty in my life. Are you hearing me? The Bible says, and the angels, after they have carried sacrifice before the Lord, don't forget, two weeks ago, we started looking at giving unto the Lord, the benefit of giving, and I share with us how God is the one that started the principle of giving, according to uh, John, um, John what? John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave, sacrifice that he gave, he gave, Praise the Lord. So here, you see Manoah giving unto the Lord. And uh, after that, something mysterious happened. Something wondrous thing happened. The angels of the Lord perform wonders. Permit me to use magic. What is magic? Something that is strange. Am I right? So the angels of the Lord do something that was strange in their life, something that they have never witnessed, something that was that, something that was difficult to explain. And they look, they look with their whole body. Here, Mr. Herman, everyone that knows you, they will look, they will look, they will look and look and look and look to you ask them to close their mouth in the name of Jesus. So what, what is the prayer? 
Oh Lord my God, today, do something wondrous, something mysterious, something strange in my life, in my marriage, in the name of Jesus. Can you turn it to prayer? Say, oh Lord my God, as I have come before you today, let your angels, according to Judges 30 verse 19, let your angels do something wondrously in my life, in my marriage, in my business, in my career today. In the name of Jesus, as I've come before you today, my Lord, my God, do something wonderful, something mysterious, something strange, something wonderful. Lord, do it in my life. Do it in my marriage. Do it in my business. Do it in my career. Do it in the life of my loved one. My children. My wife. My husband. My father. My mother. Your loved one. Measure them. The work of your hand. Let the Lord God do something mysterious. Something wonderful. Something wonderful. Something wonderful. Something wonderful. Something wonderful. Something wonderful. Ask the Lord God to fix it and do it. Today. In the name of Jesus. As I love to do it. Something wonderful. Wondrous thing. Wondrous thing talk about testimony. Testimony that you cannot talk, you cannot define. Testimony that break protocol. Testimony that go beyond human calculation. As I love to do it in your life. As I love to do it in your marriage. As I to do in your business and your career, in the name of Jesus, my Lord, my God, concerning this ministry, pray in the Good Network. And so I've come before you today, oh Lord, my God, do something wonderful, wondrous thing, 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 wondrous thing. Can you turn it to prayer? Let the Lord God do wonderful thing. Wondrous thing. In your life, in your home, in your marriage, in your business, in your career. <clears throat> Let God do it today. 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 In Jesus' name, we are praying. And the angels of, and the angels did wondrously that they begin to look because they cannot explain it. They were lost. Ah, hear me, sir. Hear me, man. That your oncoming testimony, you will be lost inside it in the name of Jesus. Do you not hear that, my prayer? When you can give account of the testimony, you are not lost. When you can give account of that testimony, of that breakthrough, it's not a wonderful thing. When you can explain... With your human sense, it's no wonderful thing. You are believing God for fruit of the womb, and you are still doing menstruation. You are seeing uh, your monthly flow. You are see, you can still calculate your heat period, your fertile period. How oh, forget it? That is no wonderful things. Come and ask my mother when she she, she was pregnant of me. Nothing like that again. That was the reason they named me Ore Olua. Because it can only be the gift of God. I have stopped. I have stopped. There's nothing like fertility in me again. Uh -uh, for how many years? How many years? Nothing like that. And she just, she was just pregnant. Four months after she put to bed. Which means five months. She was pregnant for five months. Unknown to her. And nobody was aware. Five months. It can only be God. So I'm sure they cannot, they don't want to name the side. It can only be God. <laughs> so they now name the side. This one that is just strange, let's name it the gift of God. Because if it's not the gift of God, it cannot come in a strange way. The same way you have a strange testimony in the name of Jesus. I said the same way you have a strange testimony in the name of Jesus. You are believing God for healing. Medical people have written you off. In this area, according to medicine, according to, according to, it cannot be possible again. And suddenly, the Lord remove it. Is that not strange? And they ask you to be uh, giving testimony. How does it happen? What do you want to say? Even the doctors, 
when they don't know what to explain, you want to explain. What do you want to explain? So it's strange. And that is that is what we are talking about. All your business from January to now that has not been giving you a result. Tomorrow is Monday, you resume to back to the office. And they begin to pull order. The order that you will not be able to meet in the next one month. And they said, don't worry, we will pay. Just make sure that you, you, you try and meet or what, uh, whatever you can supply and supply it and augment the rest. And it's like, am I, sleep? Am I dreaming? You are not dreaming. It's the wondrous thing. Is it that's the prayer we are talking about? Oh, you are not even due for promotion. Yeah, it's close now. Who is doing for promotion? No, no company is doing promotion. No, is this the right time for promotion? This is the right time to balance account and see uh, how big to prepare for next year. And suddenly they recall folder. Some people must be promoted. Some things happen in the country in the in the in, the, in your sector. And some people, some people must be promoted. And the next person is they just call on you from nowhere. That is what we are talking about. One draw thing. That you yourself, you are looking at yourself. Is this thing real? Can it be real? Miracle that you are now, you don't even trust God that you are praying for it. You are not getting it. The miracle that happened to you. You don't trust that that miracle is from God again. Your faith did not carry it. And you are not looking at it. Hope this is not temptation from Satan. <laughs> you know when God do some things, you are not, you are lost that God can do it. You begin to look at it. Hope it's not temptation from Satan. My brother, wake up. It's not temptation from Satan. It's the wonderful thing. The wondrous thing. That you have just prayed now. Are you ready to take that prayer one more time before we go? So long, my God. Say in the name of Jesus. Say in my life, in my marriage, in my business, in my career. Do one draw thing. As I enter into this week, do one wonderful, wonderful thing. One draw 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 thing. As I look out to do wonderful and wondrous thing in your life. In the name of Jesus. Wondrous thing. In Jesus' name we are praying. When your promotion comes, I remember I also work in an organization. My former church. When I when I when when the employed me to come and work there as a pastor, as an intercessor, as a pastor, but I focus on intercession. When I resume, there was no seat for me. All the seats, all the desks were occupied. So I'll be sitting for the first week, I'll be sitting on the altar. When everybody are inside the pastorate, where all the pastors are, I have no seat. I will be sitting. And I love to sit. I, I love to have my table so that I can read and write. So I'll be sitting on the altar. On the um, first week, second week, second week on was on, on Friday. I don't know that they have someone do some meeting at the back. And the head of the pastorate now call me. He said, all right. As long as you are a pastor here, you have to sit in this office. I said, yes, I would like to sit, but where is my seat? He said, you just find a place to sit. Where should I sit? And he said, you should be sitting here. There's no table. There's no... The seat meant for those who, are, who come for counseling. As you be... Am I here to, for counseling? If I want to want my pastor to cancel me, I know how to go about it. So I should be sitting on seat who meant for those who come for counseling. And I turn it to a guessing. I said, sir, if you want me to sit down, give me a chair and a table. And the man in annoyance, he said, you don't talk to your boss like that. I said, we do respect. I don't have a seat. I don't have a chair. You are now saying that you... I said, I will continue to sit on the altar. So if you don't like it, if it's against you, if it's against the system, 
do the right thing. Provide me a share on the table. He said, I will, I will, I will, and the man will say, and if I don't give you a share on the table, I said, I will continue that. And the man said, I will give you a query. I said, you give me a query. Somebody that they just employed, less than one month. He's, he's still like, he's like, you see, maybe it's like uh, somebody is still on a trial. I said, that's the best option. And the man said, okay, today is Friday. On Monday, we meet in this office, we show ourselves. And I told him, yes, we shall see. <laughs> That was on um, on Friday. Friday morning. So I left the office. I went back to the altar. I sat on the altar. I'm not saying you should go against your boss. <laughs> and uh, before the closing of the day, some things happened. Saturday, some things happened. On Sunday, on Sunday, there was an office. We did 24 hours on that Friday, something happened, and they needed somebody to replace somebody, um, the woman in that office. Big office. You are, you are to, oh, you are not sharing office. You, sh you are not sharing decks. You share a whole office to yourself. <laughs> whatever if you like, you, 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 whatever you like, you do in that office. You are the owner. You are in charge of the office. You don't report to anybody, you only report to the boss. And because I don't have me and that woman and that man we we fought, and he said, I will show you. So they not call him. We needed somebody to fill in this uh, office. Go and look for somebody and bring them the person. And the man within me said, Yeah, that boy, I show him, I, I told him that we show him on Monday. I have somebody already. <laughs> Who does he have table? He need an office. <laughs> that was how my name was mentioned. And they carried me to the office. Well, I'll get it there. The boss in the office looked at me and said, All right, you. <laughs> I just laughed. He said, Good. I was looking for, I was asking for a table. Am I right? But what did I receive? I didn't receive a table. I received a whole office. I was. Argument was on a table. Just give me a table, small table. But when God turned everything around, they gave me a whole office. Oh, uh, when they now say I should see that I now said that I was looking at myself. I was asking myself, is this not a trap? Is this God? Is this not a trap? Hear me, sir. Hear me. We are going to pray again. You know why I share that? What you are looking for right now, what you are asking God for right now, when God bring it. Peter was asking for just a small breakthrough that we feel is met. But when God answered him, God did not only give him a table. God gave him net breaking, sheep sinking, other sheep begin to sink. And you call your family to come and be helped. They receive help. They cannot contain it. They, took, they begin to help others from that thing. That is the meaning of that prayer. Lord, do wonderful do one thing in my life. Are you ready to take it one more time? Lift up your hand. Say, Lord, my God, as you go into this week, do wonderful thing, wondrous thing in my life. In the name of Jesus. Wonderful thing, wondrous thing. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Somebody have prayed for me. Can we take that prayer? Say in the name of Jesus. Say in this prayer avalanche that is coming next week. So, Lord, our God, do wondrous things in our life. In the name of Jesus. Mommy, first of all, may God bless you for that prayer. Everybody, can you pray that prayer? We are starting prayer avalanche next week, Wednesday. So, Lord, our God, this prayer avalanche that is coming, do wonderful things, wondrous things in our life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Every one of you who have prayed that prayer, may God do wondrous things in your life in the name of Jesus, in your home, in your marriage, in your business, in your career, in everything that concerns you. May the Lord God do wondrous things in your life in the name of Jesus. May your testimony speak in the name of Jesus. So shall he be. In Jesus' name, we are praying. In the next uh, 20, 25 minutes, I'm going to rush over this topic. Praise the Lord. Two weeks ago, we started the topic, 
the giving, power of giving, giving in the, to the work of God, giving to the things of God. Amen. And I share with us from that anchor scripture, John 3, 16. John 3, 16. John 3, 16. And I told us from John 3, 16 that God is the one that started the principle of giving. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And I share with us that for us to give, there are principles that govern it from that John 3, 16. Number one, you must love God. For God so loved. God is a is God that love. He loves us. So you don't give with hatred. When you want to give, you must love God. You must love the things of God. Your father, your mother, your wife, your husband, your children, your boss. The president of your nation. It may not belong to your political party. As long as the president over your nation, you must love him. And uh, there's the second principle there. He gave, gave. What does he give? He gave his only begotten son. There must be something that you have that you must give. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. It's not just. The Bible says he gave his only begotten son. Something precious. So when you are giving to the work of God from that principle, he tells you what you must give. Not the leftover. Not the abandoned one. Not the one that is not good. Praise the Lord. You gave something that is precious to you. His only begotten son. Something that was precious to him. That was what God gave. Praise the Lord. And uh, there was a condition attached to it. Whosoever believes in him. Whosoever believes in him. That is the condition. When you are giving, you give with faith. With faith. With faith. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, there's always a reward. There's always a consequence for giving. And what is that? But have everlasting life. Everlasting life. Praise the Lord. And I share with us some um, from from the Bible. I share with us what you can give. You can give your you can give material possession. You can give clothes. You can give house. You can give landed property. You can give a car. You, what do you have in your house that you are not using? What do you have in your house? What do you have in your store? You are not using it, but you keep it because you are expecting that you use it tomorrow. Because that is so precious to you. Stop playing. Somebody say stop playing. <laughs> Something that you do not use for the past one week, for the past one month, for the past one a year. You are just keeping it there. Uh, keeping it there. You can give material possession. You can give money. Praise it alone. You can give your time. You can give your talent. You can give your gift. You can give money. I've talked about that one. Praise it alone. Praise the living Jesus. And I thought I, I I remember I shared with us that the common one is the offering and the tithe that we give. But you know that even the tithe, there are three different kinds of tithe that the Bible made mention about. Three different kind of tithe. It's only one that we, the only one that we announce that, and people are fighting over it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. What is tithe? Tithe is just ten percent of your income. Ten percent. Ten percent. Ten percent is nothing. But you see, saying, ah, this ten percent. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. The most common ten percent, which is tithe, is the Leviticus or the sacred tithe. Praise the Lord. That is the one, the ten percent, the tithe that you always take to church, take to the house of God. Praise the Lord. I have some people who pay their tithe to this ministry too. Numbers 18, 21 to 24. Praise the Lord. That is Levitical tithe. Levitical tithe. Praise the Lord. Somebody asked a question sometimes ago. The pastor, is it not uh, the church that we must take the title? to? Praise the Lord. When we want to, you know I'm a pastor. <laughs> when we want to quote, we quote Malachi. But Malachi is not the genesis of tithe. Malachi was a rebuke. When you started using Malachi to pay tithe, you are rebuking yourself. It was when they refused to bring in tithe to the house of the Lord. And the priests, because they don't have anything to eat. Do you know that they, for every priest, any pastor you see, they also pay tithe. 
they also give a sacrificial offering. I'm going to talk about that one very soon. You have mentioned that you can give material possession, you can give your time, you can give your talent, your gift. One of the things that I gave unto God, each time I think about it, up to today, sometimes I say cry, is my time, yes, you hear me, my time and my gift. I love to work in office. I love to meet with people. I love to at least uh, uh, let's run to the office in the morning. Let's do something. Let's mess up. Let's crack our brain. Let's use. Let's argue in the law of this and law of this. It might, you know, it doesn't work. Okay, let's 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 practicalize it with what we have in the book. But he said, give me your time, give me your money, give me your time, give me your seat, give me your life. Church, those who know me know I don't go to church. Church, if you like, call me devil. If you like, call me devil. I don't go to church. I don't go to church. Yes, you hear me. Um, Orelua doesn't go to church. Orelua will never go to church. I will tell you that even if I die, you carry my, my dead body, enter into church. When it, remain, when it reach the entrance of the church, the dead, dead body will resurrect or will fall down and roll away. I used to tell people in those days, I don't go to church. But when the time comes, you say, you, yourself, not even your dead body, your body, everything about you, I want to use it in the church. Over 10 years, I was weeping, I was crying, I was... But when I knew there was no way again, I surrender and he had my dying and <laughs> die, sleeping waking up and do everything in the, the church that's the greatest thing anybody can take from me ah <laughs> praise it alone so we have the levitical priest we have the levitical and the sacred tithe we have the title of the feast the bible talk about the title of the feast what is the title of the feast this me 14 22 downward Every of your income, after you have paid 10% as a tithe, you take another 10%, you keep it. That is the tithe of a pre of a feast. Tithe of a feast. People that are looking at me, what kind of tithe is that? <laughs> tithe of a feast. Do you know the purpose? The purpose is for you. The tithe of a feast, that 10%, when you keep it for nine months, for 10 months. Once in a year, you go on vacation. That is the money you will use for that vacation. Tight of a feast. A feast. In those days, that feast is always a um, religious feast. Once in a year, they will go back to Jerusalem to go and have a feast. So, so that no one will complain that they don't have money to travel for that feast. God demanded that they keep 10% of their income for tight of a feast. Today, vacation rest you see last month the lord was i was praying for my prayer team and the lord mentioned about three or four of them i said tell them to go and rest if they need to go to hospital tell them to go to hospital let them rest let them rest what is vacation season of rest allow the body to rest allow your brain to rest you don't run wake up six o'clock in the morning you rush to office you wake up you come back ten o'clock Eh, hey, rest relax your brain rest so the money that you use for that period of time that you did not work eh which you and i call what a vacation these days is that 10 percent of feast and we have the third um tithe the tithe for the poor deuteronomy 14 28 to 29 uh that one is every 33 years every 33 years that ten percent every three year is for the Levitical priests, is for the fatherless, is for the those who are travelers who are traveling and they are lost on the road because there's no money again. Is for the widow. Some people call it the tithe of the widow. Not only for the widow, for the less privileged. Praise it, the Lord. You see that one in Deuteronomy 14, 28 to 29. Tithe for the poor. So those are the three type of tithe. Praise it, the Lord. We have uh, when we are talking about or uh, give you unto the law, I've talked about offering arms. The Bible talk about arms, arms giving. What is arms giving? That is giving to the poor, the needy. Matthew 6 2 to 3. Amen. We have your first fruit. Proverbs 3 9 to 10. First fruit. First fruit. Proverbs 3 9 to 10. 
and we have sacrificial giving sacrificial giving sacrificial giving you know i've just i've mentioned it when we are talking about giving giving is not only about money you can give your material possession you can give your time just like what i'm giving now my time as a pastor then my talent then my gift the time i'm supposed to go and use and work i'm giving it to seek the face of god amen and to minister to people my talent my gift praise the lord so sacrificial giving is the next one what is sacrificial giving sacrificial giving is giving up something valuable something valuable something that is costly unto you you give it up unto god based on the act of faith underline act of faith and trust if you don't have faith if you don't trust god amen you don't do that giving up something that is valuable and costly unto you there's even between sacrificial giving and offering offering you give offering anytime every day every time eh? uh, every sunday service in your church i believe many of you have given offering today in your church am i right praise the lord so offering doesn't cost you anything you look at your pocket oh i have this extra money take eh? so that is offering it is totally different from sacrificial giving whereas many people still miss it here miss i am as a pastor now i'm talking about giving after i finish talking about giving he should have moved emotion on the line especially those who are who works in the office or in the prophetic arena as they are talking about giving they'll be giving revelation they'll be giving prophecy oh hey, when you give i bless, bless you you increase you enlarge you use that 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 and you are moved and you want god you have ten dollars you want god to multiply it you are doing yourself god is not a, a money doubler you will not do that <laughs> so when you give when you give at that time what you give is offering no what you give yourself is not sacrificial giving sacrificial giving demands something that will be painful something that will be costly and when you are talking about something that will be painful something that will be costly it has to do with you and, and god and some condition attached to it it's not sacrificial giving is not meant for everybody it's not meant for everybody in the church your pastor finished preaching about giving ah i'm going to give sacrificial giving today what you just give that day is just offering sacrificial giving has to do with you and god and a time and a place sacrificial giving have to do between you and god a particular seed a particular token a particular offering and a particular place and a particular time when you give because somebody preached that you should give and you are touched because they said when you give you will be blessed and you give at that time even if you give your whole house you just give an offering will that not be blessed it will be blessed for every giving you know i've said it before for every giving before the lord god there's always a reward for it for every giving there's always a reward for it but let me quickly talk about uh, about sacrificial giving psalm 50 verse 5 what is sacrificial giving psalm 50 verse 5 gather my saints together unto me those who have made covenant with me by sacrifice those who enter into covenant what is covenant agreement those who enter into agreement with me by sacrifice sacrifice by what they offer by that thing that cost them when they are giving it they are crying ah, i'm releasing this thing you hold the game you look at it ah oh <laughs> i have done it so i can feel it i can feel it you are giving it and you are crying you are giving it it's like this god is wicked uh, he's wicked if not wicked <laughs> Abraham said for his soul of the world again is only begotten son it's so painful now <laughs> He said, gather the saints. Who are the saints? It's not by their righteousness. Those who have entered into covenant, into agreement with me, with their sacrifice. Lord, this is what I will be doing for you. Lord, this is what I will be giving you. Yes, it's painful, but I will be doing it for you. Do you know that your praises can be sacrificed unto the Lord? Your praise 
you decide every first day of the week, every first day of the month, I'm going to worship God. Everything I have, I'll be using it to serve God. And you are using it to the detriment of some things in your life. Do you know that that, that's, that is sacrifice? So God now said, gather them up to me. Those are those, those are the people that God calls saints. It's not those who are living, those who, who are entitled to agreement with God with their sacrifice, with their giving, sacrificial giving. Genesis 8, 20 to 22, I talked about it last week. Noah gave. Noah gave, and that will lead to where can we give it? <coughs> In Genesis 8, 20 to 22, Noah was just coming out of the flood. He looked everywhere, destroyed. Nothing to talk about. So where is he going to start from? The whole world has been destroyed. He will, everything that he's seen had decayed. So where is he going to start from? This man was lost. Where am I going to start from? What am I going to do? How am I going to go about it? Then the only thing that came to his mind was to just carry sacrifice unto the Lord. And the Bible said he took everything that was good there. You see that it's not, it's not, it's not painful. Everything has been destroyed. So the only thing that was left with him, the good thing that is supposed to economies, uh, business people that you think about how to multiply them, how to plow them, how to do business with them, so that instead of him to do business with them, instead of did him to convert them to seed and go and plant or and begin to raise those fowl, those animals, the Bible said it to brought them before the logo and sacrifice them. Lord, I have nothing. This is the only good thing I have. I don't even know what to do with them because I don't know where I'm going to start. There's decay around. So I go and plant them and the hand that has been destroyed will destroy them. Okay, okay no problem. This little that I have that I have to start from, I give it back unto you. He slaughter everything. You think that it's not painful? You go and try it. <laughs> go and try it. Praise the Lord. Here, Mr. Ayama, let me share some of the benefits of sacrifice with us. When you offer sacrifice unto the Lord God, when you offer sacrifice something you offer unto the Lord God that is painful, that is costly, when you offer them unto the living God, it provokes divine presence. That means the power of the Almighty God. It provokes them. Just like the scripture I gave us that we should pray from, praise the Lord, praise the living Jesus. Judges 30 verse 19. When Manoah offered sacrifice unto the living God, he provoked the power of the Almighty God for wonderful thing, for wondrous thing to happen. You are believing God for wonderful thing, for wondrous thing. You want to provoke it. Just don't carry, don't carry offering. Stop carry sacrifice before God. Hear me, sir. Hear me, man. The simple arithmetic that one can explain about it is you are combining two things together. There's a spiritual law that governs this world. There's a spiritual law, spiritual law that governs this world. Either you are a Christian, either you are a Muslim, either you are Hindus, either you are a cultic person, when you obey that spiritual law, you see things in this world begin to come in place, working for you. So when you now do it in a right way, you channel it unto God. Because many people are doing it, they channel it unto Satan. It will, it will bring some, some, it will provoke some things in their life. It will bring some reaction in their life. But in the end, there's always a negative effect. But you, that you know about God, when you obey that spiritual law that governs this world, and you not channel it unto God, it is the law God that blesses without hiding sorrow. That is the meaning. Satan bless, but there is sorrow ahead. But when you channel your own sacrifice unto God, it bless without hiding sorrow. You want to provoke God's power, sacrifice provoke God's presence and power. Praise see the Lord. Sacrifice is a divine force that turns man's shame into a divine fame. The shame of a man. The shame of a marriage. The shame over an individual when you enter into covenant by sacrifice with God that sacrifice turn that shame that reproach you turn it around and turn it to fame sacrifice is a tool of warfare yes that's why you see the occulting people 
when they are passing through some things, some spiritual things, and uh, you see they are deep down myself, go and carry sacrifice, and you, you are just surprised. They just carry some, some fetish thing, and uh, the problem, the crisis, you just... Ha, it's a truth of warfare. You remember that king in the Bible that was waging war against the Israel? When he could not finish them, when he saw that this battle is fierce, the children of Israel, the children of Israel, the children of God, quote unquote, they are winning the battle. The Bible said he took his first child, his only heirs to the throne. He slaughtered that child as a sacrifice. And the moment that it happened, the children of Israel, they turn around and they begin to fight themselves. There was a war, there were, things were against them. And they begin to run at a skater, they begin to, to run back. If this one can kill his son, no, we cannot face him. This one is a demon on his own. Sacrifice is a tool of warfare. Sacrifice bind us to God. Psalm 118, verse 27. Sacrifice bind us to God. Sacrifice bind us to God. Psalm 118, verse 27. Let's look at that one. Look at one or two scriptures. 118, 27. God is the Lord, which has shown us light, revelation. Light, they are talking about revelation. Bind the sacrifice with cord, even unto the horns of the altar. So, sacrifice is what binds you unto God. The altar, they are talking about the presence of God, represent God. So, when you carry sacrifice before the Almighty God, he tie you, he bind you, he bind everything about you to that altar. And you know the implication? When you are tied to an altar, this is microphone now. When you tie something to this microphone, hear me, sir, hear me, man. As long as this microphone is here, whatever I tie to it remain here. Unless somebody should come and remove it. And nobody. If I tie it, maybe jokingly, I'm just playing, and I tie this uh, handkerchief to this microphone now. Let me leave and go out. Let me travel. I know my house. They won't remove it. Because you hear, Daddy tied the handkerchief to the microphone. Maybe he saw a revelation. <laughs> you know, sometimes, people always, those, those of us who operate in the prophetic, whatever you do, they just, people around you will tie me to something. <laughs> Maybe I'm just playing. Maybe I'll just do something without me. I just tie the handkerchief because I don't want the breeze to blow the handkerchief. My people will think that maybe I saw a revelation. That is why I tied the handkerchief. Nobody will remove it too until I come back and remove it myself. They won't remove it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So when you carry sacrifice before the Lord, that sacrifice represents you and it tie you unto God. It tie everything that concerns you unto God. Let's see how Satan, when you, the meaning is, you have been tied unto God. Don't forget, I said nobody will remove it. So let's see how Satan will come and tamper with you then. How Satan will tamper with your marriage. How Satan will tamper with your business. How Satan will tamper with your career. The only thing Satan will do is, Satan will stay beside and be watching. till when somebody will help him lose that handkerchief. But as long as the handkerchief is not loose, he won't come. Come before God and lose you. Lose your money in the, on, from uh, uh, he, he, His madness, Satan madness, did not reach that level. His own madness, his craziness, did not. There's a level and there's a boundary. He knows his boundary. He knows that he must not come to the, and touch God. No, when he's not. <laughs> So that is what that scripture is telling us. That is what that scripture is talking about. That the sacrifice bind us together. The moment you are bind unto God, Satan will just stay and be watching. We'll be watching when somebody will come and lose you. We'll be watching when by mistake you will lose yourself. And when you are tired of God, you will lose yourself. We'll be tired when your children will lose you. We'll be tired when your children will say, we are not doing uh, God again. They will lose themselves. Or you will lose yourself. Or you will lose your marriage. Or you will lose your business. Or you will lose your career from God. Then you not say, hey, welcome. I'll be waiting over these years. But as long as you are tied with sacrifice unto God, who, what? <laughs> he won't try it. 
Amen. Sacrifice bring about wonders, strange event. That is Judges 13, 19 that we look at and we pray. Amen. Wonders there may be deliverance. It may be salvation. It may be healing. It may be prosperity. It may be a common breakthrough. It may be fruitfulness. Talk about it. Mention what you want. Praise the Lord. Genesis 8, 20 to 22. Sacrifice, break, and destroy the prevailing causes on the land. When uh, Noah Christ sacrificed before the Lord, and the Lord said, I will no longer curse the heart again for my sake because of your sacrifice. No! And the, sac and the curse on the land was broken. Sacrifice. What is that cause that is prevailing? What is that negative event that is prevailing in your lineage? It happened to your father, it happened to your mother, it happened to people, it happened to your uncle, and you see this is prevailing. Why you just need to break it, it's a sacrifice before God. Carry a sacrifice before God. It provoke it, it break it. Praise it alone. Genesis 9, verse 1. After it break causes on the line, it now provoke divine and enforcing divine blessing. It provoke and enforce divine blessing. After God now said, and this land, the earth, I will not curse you again. The next is, and the Lord in Genesis 1, uh, 9, uh, Genesis 9, verse 1, the Lord not bless. Go forth, be fruitful from today. Ha! I have tasted, I have smelled the aroma of your sacrifice, and I am taught, be fruitful. It's only sacrifice. It's only true sacrifice. First King 3, 3 to 5. Talk about Solomon. Sacrifice secure divine backing. You want God to back you up in whatever you do. Carry sacrifice before the Lord. Carry sacrifice before the Lord. <laughs> Let me give us two more because of our time. Our time is two more. And I quickly share how to offer sacrifice unto the Lord. First Kings 17, 8 to 16. Sacrifice provoke unlimited supply and Put an end to scarcity. Provoke unlimited supply, unlimited surplus, and put an end to scarcity. That first king 17, 18. The woman said, The only thing I have is for me and my son to eat. He said, Pro, the prophet said, Go and bring it. Burn it, bring it. Let me eat first. And after today, just say the Lord God, the cruise of oil will not run dry again. And the Bible said it. The Bible could confirm it. Nothing run dry in the life of that woman. Because she obeyed, she carried it before the man of God. Sacrifice, terminate, premature death. Second Kings 3, the same thing. Second Kings 3. Sacrifice, terminate, premature death. That's why you see people, when they see death, when the spirit of death is angry around them, there are priests, we ask them, go and look for animal, sacrifice the animal. And uh, I've shared this. Well, my wife, how many years now? When we just married and uh, my wife was pregnant, our first child, how old are you? 14. So that's about 15 years ago. <laughs> don't mind me, I don't know that. <laughs> about 15 years ago, we just married, my wife was pregnant, the first house I uh, live. Another tenant there was the wife was pregnant. And one Sunday, we were planning to go to church. And uh, me, I've left. As a pastor, I've left. So my wife was later coming. And when she said, the lady said, I should borrow our, some of our pots. I said, for what? She said, she want to do Sarah. What's Sarah? Sacrifice. Eh? That food you cook. Eh? You are dedicated to idol and you serve everybody. My wife said, no. My husband was not here because we are a pastor. We can, I need everything that belongs to us. We must not use it for anything like that. Said, okay. She was pregnant. My wife was pregnant. She was heavily pregnant. My wife was heavily pregnant. It was in the night. My wife told me. I said, don't mind them. He said of them to give their life to Christ. They have finished their sacrifice and everything before we came back that day. But I think, is it in the night or the second day? Either in the night or the second day. I wanted to go and put on my generator. And I saw, as I was about to put it on, I saw the head of the, the particular animal that they slaughter. I saw it. They now put it within my generator. I said, ah. When I look at 
the head of that animal it is the head of the animal that the occultic people always use to transfer debt when death is coming to somebody, they will ask the person to go and look for a particular kind of bird, a particular kind of animal. So when they slaughter that animal, the death, the death will be transferred. And they always use that, that particular animal for a pregnant woman who is about to lose her pregnancy or lose herself. We are becoming on this journey some days now. <laughs> and I saw the head. My head was rolling. What? So they, they they told you that you are going to lose your pregnancy or lose yourself. So they now say you go and transfer the debt to my own wife, me or Elua, and I'm savvy girl. Ah, no, 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 no. You are make a bloody mistake, a bloody mistake. You should have done it to another person, me. Ah, uh, what kind of issue you look me, you look me from head to toe. The only thing you want to do to 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 do with me is to now transfer debt. Did you wear me that I'm so light that you cannot see you cannot see Christ in me or you cannot see the power of God radiating? So in me, okay. I did not talk because if I talk, it will lead to argument and we may fight. And if anything happened to her tomorrow, they will say I'm the one that caused it. So I just remove that thing. I just throw it away. I in annoyance, I just entered my house. I told my wife, my wife said, ah, uh, what, is the, what is the meaning? I did not tell her the implication of that animal because she was heavily pregnant. So that it uh, put fear in her. I went back to my closet. I report them, report the reason that I know the reason why what they use it for. I report them, report everything unto God. Just one prayer Lord, it's not my battle. Just show them that you are behind us. I offer my life as a sacrifice unto you. You see, my life as a sacrifice. Somebody will not bring in fetish animal. My life is precious than that animal. So when you weigh it in the spirit realm, my, my own life that I've been used as sacrifice is more than that thing that they are just bringing. So one sacrifice is heavier than one. One sacrifice costs more than one. So God, let my own sacrifice provoke your anger. That was on Sunday night. On Monday, the wife, the lady and the husband, they enter into error. They just enter into error. On Tuesday, she was admitted. She was admitted. She nearly lost her life. She lost the baby. She lost the pregnancy. To God be the glory. The, the, the baby inside my wife that they want to transfer data at that time. How old are you now? 14. So I'm just telling you some things that happened when your mother was pregnant about you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know what I'm saying? This? Sacrifice break debt. It terminate premature debt. It terminate premature debt. Their own sacrifice. <laughs> Where they present it is a wrong place because there is already a sacrifice on ground for every one of you right now. Unless you don't understand, there is a sacrifice on ground that you must not die prematurely. Jesus Christ killed himself, Jesus Christ offered his life, Jesus Christ offered himself as a sacrifice so that no other sacrifice will be used to transfer death on you. If you know, you understand this. If you understand this, you will not die suddenly. When the spirit of death is hovering around you, just call for the sacrifice of the blood of Jesus. Just present it unto God. Praise ye the Lord. Sacrifice give us access to unusual revelation. Praise ye the Lord. How do you offer sacrifice unto the living God? And we close for today. Deuteronomy 12, 13 to 14. How do we offer sacrifice unto God? Let's look at Deuteronomy 12. Deuteronomy 12, 13 to 14. Ah, they have shown me, they have shown me hell in this world. <laughs> Especially on this assignment, they have shown me, they have shown me hell. They have shown me hell. Ah, me too. Very stubborn. I no go agree. As long as God is by my side. As long as what I'm doing is right. Ah, no good. 
I'm stubborn. I know me myself, I know I'm stubborn in that area. <laughs> when it comes to the things of God, I will tell you, it's either you kill me, but if you don't, cannot kill me, I will show you, show you when. You see, when they send snake, the same pregnancy, my wife was sitting down, and I was inside the room, and uh, the Lord just said, rise now, they want to strike her. And I ran, ran out to where she sat on the staircase, and I saw the snake, just the next step, step, step before her, I just call her. If I show her, she will scream. She may fall. Heavily pregnant. My wife, come. He said, what? Just come. Come and see something. Just stand up. Just come. And sluggishly, with her big stomach, she just rise. And she just rise. Rise, rise. Climb the staircase. Left the place. Enter the room. <laughs> I, said, I said, see snake at your back. <laughs> just below her feet. It is good to serve God. It is good to worship with God. It is good to work with God. It is good to be, make yourself a sacrifice unto God. You have tied yourself unto God. Nothing can harm you. Praise the Lord. Deuteronomy 12, 13 to 14. Take it to thyself. That see, thou offer not thy burnt offering in every place that thou see. Offering, you can give offering anywhere you like. To the needy, to the... But sacrifice, God is saying, see to it that your burnt offering, that is sacrifice, your burnt offering, burnt offering, talk about sacrifice, you don't give it anywhere. But in the place which the Lord shall choose, in the place which the Lord shall choose, how do you offer sacrifice unto the Lord? Number one, you must locate the place which God relates with, with you. The way where God relates with, and God where God relates with you. There are two things. Must be a place, an altar of God. It can be church, it can be fellowship, it can be the life of a man, it can be the life of a woman. A place that you know that God is in this place. Then number two, where God relates with you, relate with you, relate with you. If God is not relate with you there, why do you want to go and carry sacrifice there? If God is not relating there, why do you want to carry sacrifice there? Deuteronomy 12, 11 to 14. It must be a place where God relates with and where God relates with you. Number two. Sacrifice, carry sacrifice. Second Samuel 24, 24 to 26. Sacrifice is not about volume. Offering have to do with volume. Offering have to do with volume. But sacrifice have nothing to do with volume, but cost. But offering have to do with volume, not cost. Offering don't cost you. It may be big, dynastic, and you are carrying it uh, everywhere. And everybody say, ah, you see the offering that he brought. That is offering. But when you have to do with sacrifice, it may just be minor thing something that have no weight physically but within you you are crying you are sweating and eh? each time you think about it you just shake your head like this. you just smile you know why you are smiling you are crying inside you are crying inside you are crying inside a friend of mine uh, we lost contact over 20 years now come across my number and he called me he said please are you so 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 person i say yes I call my name. I just laugh. He said, I saw some things on Facebook. I don't believe. I said, what is that? Are you a pastor? I said, yes. Ah. He said, you are in Nigeria. I said, yes. <coughs> he said, no, you cannot be in Nigeria. You that I know. Ah. All our friends, when we are talking, we used to thought that you must have lost in one uh, foreign country now. <laughs> I said, no, I'm lost here in Nigeria. Even lost in the work of God. He said, you become pastor. I said, yes. He said, no, until I check you, until I test you that you are well. <laughs> Praise it, the Lord. It's, sacrifice have nothing to do with volume. Have nothing to do with amount. But what it costs you. It cost me leaving Nigeria to go abroad and be working and succeed. Working in factory, working in... That is what it cost me. 
when all my friends gather together and are talking about business, business, business. Ah, I'm not a lazy person now. <laughs> but it costs me that. Amen. So it has to do with cost, not volume. Number three. Sacrifice has to do with obeyed, obeying God and afford fear. Fear what will come out of it. Fear what will people will say. Just obey. Why? You know, number one is sacrifice has to do with relating with God and a place. When God is demanding, some of us, God demands some things from us. This is what I'm asking you to give me. Abraham, give me your son, your only begotten son, eh, the one you love so much. You see all the condition, so that I won't go and take another person's child. So that is what God demands. So you not demand, sacrifice not have to do with obedience. Just obey what God is saying. Put fear aside. Don't use your mentality. Ah, if I surrender this thing now, ah, ye me, my head, my life, oh, eh, eh, fear. <laughs> Praise it alone. Let me rush. Number four, sacrifice have to do with doing it now, not postponing, not delaying. Ecclesiastes 5, verse 4, Psalm 119, verse 60. You want to carry sacrifice? Offering, you can postpone it. Sacrifice. Because it has to do with time. So you don't delay it. You don't postpone it. Psalm 119, verse 60. Psalm 119, verse 60. You do it now. Oh, I will do it tomorrow. When there is time frame. So when you come back tomorrow to do it, it's no longer valid again. Because there is time attached to it. Number five. When you carry your sacrifice, speak well to that sacrifice. Bless it. Pray on it. Are you hearing me? Whatever you want to give or whatever you are giving unto God, bless it. Speak well of it. Number six. Avoid showing off. When you show off, you can show off an offering. You can show off an offering. But when it has to do with sacrifice, something that pay you, can you show off with something that pay you? So when I see people saying they are giving sacrificial giving and they are showing off, I know they don't understand the principle. Sacrificial giving that you are crying. Inside you, you are not happy that you are giving it, but you just want to obey God. So how can you show, say, give us your only begotten son and you want to kill your only begotten son for God? So how can you show it off? You can't show off. The Bible says, Abraham, early in the morning, Carry his son and everything before people will be awake. Because he is painful. Sacrificial giving must be painful. Genesis 22, 3 to 16. You cannot show off when it has to do with sacrificial giving. After you have done that, give thanks. That God just demands something from you. Ah, there are millions of people that want to give that God is not taking it from them. So appreciate God. Hebrew 10, 31, last but not the least for today. Thank you for giving me the extra time. Hebrew 10, Hebrew 10, where's my Bible? Hebrew 10, 31, that is the last for today. Hebrew 10, where is the book of Hebrew? Hebrew 10, 31, last for the day. After we have done this, all this, what, should, what is the next thing? Hebrew 10, 31. No, that's not 31. We have missed the scripture. There's a scripture in everything. We should be patient. Please, look at my wife. What is that scripture? Hebrew 10. That we should be patient. After we have done all this thing, we should be patient. It's not 31. <coughs> 36. Hebrew 10, 36. Hebrew 10, 36. For you have need of patience. After that you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. After you have done this thing, be patient that you may receive. Many people, the moment they do that, they want God to do it today, today. Ah, no. God has a way to recompensate you. God has a way to bless you. After you have done this, be patient so that you can be rewarded. And when he's talking about the reward for sacrifice, don't forget, God is the one that knows what you need. More than would you yourself. So 
one time you think that it is money, but your case is not money. So God will look at you, look at your environment, what you need, and will not reward you with what you need, not what you are asking for. Um, be patient. After you have done your own, be patient with God. Let him do his own will. Let him reward you. Be patient. Early this month, I met a family and um, uh, they just, we are just talking and uh, I said, I'm sorry. I have a message, but he said, come. I went there and uh, I was not sharing with them. I said, I was praying for you and uh, I saw something about your family, but I'm still believing God for it. And the man said, you should have, let me, what is it? I said, I saw an, I, I, I saw your brother, his family, that they have an accident. In so, so, so place, uh, they showed me the environment. I said, I pray that day. I pray very well for you that no, no, no. I said, but I'm still waiting for God to confirm what is the meaning of it. And the man said, when? And I mentioned it. He just said, Pastor, you have seen well. The day God brought the revelation, the third day, his brother, the wife of his brother, and the children, all of them inside the car, in the same place where God showed the revelation, they had accident, they, the car, uh, had accident there, car right off. When he said that, I opened my mouth and said, ah, I look at the date, just two days interval. You know, I say, the man I said, Pastor, if you have not prayed, do you know what will have happened? If God show you and you do not undo it, do you know what will have happened? A whole family will have wiped off. But within me, it's not me. And I laugh out of giving in a special way from that place. Within me, and I said, "Why I use? Why I, I used to pray for that man? Because that man is one of those people God is using to bless my ministry, to bless me. So every time I raise a seed, his offering, just like those who God is using for this ministry, they are tied their offering. I don't call it tied. I don't call. I call it sacrifice before God." Wait patiently. God know what you want. God know the best thing for you. So for that man, the best thing for him, the best thing that God can use to reward him, is to preserve, can you just imagine, his wife and all the children inside the car. A whole family will have been written off. They may be asking for bread. They may be asking for water. They may be asking for this, asking for that. But you do see the way God now used to reward them. God knows what is best for you. You just do your own. Just go ahead, do your own. Do it. Whatever God is laying in your hand, just go ahead, do it. He knows how to reward you. And he knows the best time to reward you. If, God have, if they have asked for a contract and uh, God answered them and they have and the husband won the contract millions of naira and the man lost his wife and all the children two of them i believe they are in a uh, university can you just imagine that money that contract would have been useless there's power in giving there's power in tight there's power there's reward in offering and there's power in sacrificial giving in the lord god open your eyes to understanding in the lord god reveal to you what you need to do for you to have your 
promotion for you to have your major breakthrough in the name of Jesus. And as he reveal it to you, may he back it up, may he strengthen you in the name of Jesus. Praise ye the Lord. Before we go to the lesson of forget by the grace of God, come this week, Tuesday, the 31st day of this month, the last day of this month, our monthly Fiji. And starting from Wednesday, Wednesday on the 1st, pre avalanche november 2023 edition will kick off the lord bless you join me throughout the month, whole month of november as you pray 12 noon nigeria time every day throughout the month the team is rest the lord will grant you rest from all manners of affliction in the name of jesus you are there you have been blessed today you want to partner with us with your seed with your tithe with your offering all like that, my sister online, you want to give, you are saying, Pastor, I want to give a sacrificial giving. You are welcome in the name of Jesus. Mrs. Ohunia, you want to give a sacrificial giving? God bless you. Just send a message to plus two three four eight zero six two six eight six two double five. We send you the account. Or Mrs. Ohunia, is it one of your cars that you want to send to the ministry so that the ministry will begin to use it? Bring it. Praise it, the Lord. <laughs> Amen. The Lord bless us in the name of Jesus. You are there. You are be blessed. You want to partner with us, with your seed, with your time, with your offering. Just send a message to the ministry account. Uh, WhatsApp number. We send you the account detail. Plus 234-80-6862-55. Till we come again another time. As you go into this week, may heaven open up upon you. May the Lord God bless you. May your reward be given unto you. May your reward not be given to another person. May God grant you victory over every enemy around you, over household enemy in the name of Jesus. Till we come again another time, especially during the prayer avalanche. Go forth and let the Lord God bless your way this week. Jesus' name. Praise ye the Lord.